The Lord is in his temple again. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I welcome you and I welcome all of our members in their homes to another exciting experience with the word of God. As we have been doing in these worship periods, we have been dealing with some hard sayings in the Bible. We shall continue to do so this evening. So you that are home, join us in the singing, join us in the prayers. At the proper time, Deacon, Deacon Morton shall read the scripture and give us the prayer. We now are at worship. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon and empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and the joy he gives. But Greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he I'll 
fight life's fight find a war with pain yes. and then as death gives way to victory I'll see the light of glory and I'll know my Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow Good evening, First Virginia Avenue family. For our scripture reading this evening, I shall read 1 John 4, starting at verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Yeah, yeah. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he have not seen? Yeah. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also, I have read this evening, 1 John, 4th chapter, verses 15 through 21. May God continue to have a blessing upon the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. To an all-wise and loving God, we come before thy holy and righteous presence this evening to say thank you, Father. As we gather here once again in your house of worship, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you continue to bless and keep us. 
and that we continue to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Bless those who are here this evening to sing thy praises. Bless those this evening that are here and in our presence to hear the word that, is, that was just read and also the words of this prayer that I pray and also to hear the inspiring message of our pastor as he brings to us the word of God. Lord Jesus, we continue to ask that you bless us in health and strength. Those who are in the hospital, the nursing homes, and in their homes that are trying to recover from an illness or an injury, we ask that you give them a speedy recovery. Also, Father, as this COVID-19 is still running rampant in thy world, we continue to ask for your healing as we pray each and every day, Father, that you will just touch us. Mm -hmm. Most of all, Father, please, Lord, heal the land. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, forgive us for all of our sins as we continue to go about doing what is pleasing in our sight. And, Father, if we stray, please have mercy on us to direct us back into that straight path again. Lord, keep us, bless us, for we love you, Father, because we know that you first love us. And for that, we ask this prayer and all prayer and blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and all of God's children say it. Amen. 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 Joy, joy, way down, down in my soul. 
Is in the soul. Nobody, nobody or nothing can take that away from you. Because nobody can find your soul. God gives a soul and only God can find it. So joy, joy down in your soul. So the Christian believer does not have to be in sadness because the world is in sadness. The Christian believer does not have to be hurting because other people are hurting. The Christian believer does not have to be crying because everybody else is crying. Because down, down in the soul, is my great joy. Thank you for that selection. And now we come to resume our study of hard sayings in the Bible. In the book of Amos, God is trying to get his people to return. So in chapter four, listen to what God has to say, because we're going to be talking about God's use of natural catastrophes. In the book of Amos, God said, and I have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and one of bread in all your places, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And also I have withholden the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another. One piece was rained upon and the other whereupon it rained not with it. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased. The palmer worm devoured them, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt with the sword and have taken away your horses and I have made the stink of your camps come up unto my nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto the Lord. So God is saying to them, I have used nature and catastrophes to get you to turn to God. Now you ought to be able to see from those words how this study touches upon what's going on in our world today. We 21st century modern people do not think that God uses the natural world in this fashion. So this passage presents difficulties for us. And I throw this out. According to this passage, is it possible that God is using the coronavirus? Come on. The text concerns Israel's lavish worship practice and yet God speaks up and says it's false there's no value to that 
God says, I have repeatedly tried to warn the people by subjecting them to famine, disease, and military defeat. Now, we don't have any problem believing that God works in human history, influencing the desires and the directions of human hearts. But in our modern scientific age, we have a very difficult time believing that God works in the processes of nature as well as he works in us. We give lip service to the belief that God is the Lord not only of history, but also of the natural realm. But in our day-to-day -day view of our environment, God does not interfere with nature's automatic processes. But the passage in Amos contradicts that. God interferes in nature all the time. God uses all kinds of catastrophes in order to get people to turn. Our passage maintains that the Lord has given a withheld rain, that he has sent blight and mildew and locusts to ruin crops, that he has infected the populace with disease as well as caused military defeats, and in an effort to warn his people to return to true worship, and obedience of him. Now, we do not like that view of God, do we? No, 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 no. We don't like to think of God as being behind the virus. We don't like to think of God as being behind the hurricanes and the floods and the fires, even hunger. No, that's not the God that we like to think about. But in the book of Amos, that's the God that he's talking about. We do not believe that famines and droughts are the results of God's actions. We do not want to believe that illnesses and natural disasters are God's punishments on even warning about sinfulness. But the whole of the Bible contradicts our close understanding for an example, in Genesis chapter 8, verses 22, God promises that the cycle of the seasons, night and day, will continue. Not because nature works automatically, but because God has promised that it would. The Bible is full of the testimony that God controls the appearance and movement of heavenly bodies. And that he can use the stars and the sun for his own purpose. Didn't he cause the sun not to go down in one battle in the Old Testament? And didn't he cause the star to travel from the east and, and stand over the crib where Jesus lay? God's also in charge of the earth's geology. God determines where there will be wind or snow, hail or dew. He gives food to all creatures and sustains all living with his breath of life. All the processes of nature depend upon God's faithfulness in maintaining their order. And when God wills, he can use the natural world for blessing his people as well as judging them. Can we accept what Amos says in chapter 4? I believe we can, and at least we ought to. Thus, when our scientists study the orderly processes of the natural world, they are describing the orders that God is sustaining in his faithfulness, whether they acknowledge it or not. Has it ever crossed your mind how all these creatures that God created, God also made it possible for all of them to be fed? Have you ever thought about that? All these creatures, some we've never seen, but God has made it possible for every one of them to be fed. Now, when God sends a catastrophe, does that always mean that God is punishing us 
when some natural disaster or illness devastates our lives? Should we see all calamities, calamities as God's word? When a moon soon drowns helpless people, is that God's punishment on them? When children die in a famine, is that God's desire? If a nursing home roof collapses or its age residence in an earthquake, is that God's wrathful judgment? When children are born with deficiencies, is that God's natural judgment? You can talk back to me because I said we're studying troublesome things in the Bible. We must realize that human stupidity and sin and sin often brings such calamities upon human beings. Now, for an example, would this coronavirus be as strong as it is today if we had dealt with it in the beginning? So it's killed many people, but did God do that? Caused by our stupidity and sin often brings calamities upon ourselves. A corrupt government that will not feed its populace can lead and has led to the starvation of millions. Homes built on a floodplain are sooner or later going to be washed away. If nuclear plants, cities, and nursing homes are erected on earthquake faults, they will run the daily risk of being destroyed. So we bring a whole lot of so-called natural disasters upon ourselves by our indifference, our selfishness, our greed, and our sin. Some catastrophes God doesn't have to bring. Just let us have our way and we'll bring them on ourselves. So Amos said to Israel, God has done all these things because he's laboring to get you to return to God. And then we must also notice that every calamity is not God's judgment on sin. Hear that? Every calamity is not God's judgment on sin. But when a disaster falls on us, certainly every Christian should ask, is God trying to tell me something? Every illness and every calamity should lead us to examine our lives and to ask ourselves if we have indeed been faithful to God. That is the question the Israelites in the day of Amos never asked themselves. Now, some of the calamities in the world that's going on, have we asked ourselves, am I responsible for it? Can we put everything on the shoulders of God? When God wants for us fullness of life and abundance, that's what God wants for us. It's not the will of God that any should perish, but people perish. But the will of God is that, is that all men and women would be saved. It is not the will of God that we kill one another. But we do. God is consistently trying to guide us by all sorts of means. Because God wants us to live abundantly. Always we should be alert and open to God's loving guidance. For we cannot have abundant life apart from God. So Amos says, if you don't return to God, God is going to use nature and its power as punishment. And so we come in contact just about every year in spring and early summer with storms that begins way out on the ocean. And if it would stay out there on the ocean, it wouldn't do much harm. But what does it do? It travels to the land. 
And after it's done its damage, it reverses itself and goes back out into the waters again. God uses the catastrophes of nature to get his people to return to him and to sometimes punish them because our God is a great God. And that's how we deal with Amos' passage of scripture. God said, I sent this, I sent this. I gave you clean teeth, meaning there was nothing for you to eat. I caused it to rain and I caused it not to rain. So you didn't have crops and when the crops grew, I caused the grasshoppers to come in and devour the crops all because you would not return. So for thought, is the coronavirus an occasion for us to start thinking? Is it because of something that we as people have done? I'm not talking about the individual. We as people. Yes, it could very well be. Well, Brother Duncan, what can we do about it? The reason God did it in the days of Amos was to cause his people to return to him. That we can do. If we have not strayed, we can come even closer to God. But if we have strayed, we can come home. And who knows whether or not God will rise up with healings in his wings. And that's the Bible study for this evening. The hard sayings of God. We don't like to think about God doing those kind of things.
Eternal God, our Father, mm. we're truly grateful for this opportunity to gather in this place for the study of your word. As your people in the midst of this world, where evil seems to be gaining more and more ground. It becomes of us to let our light shine as brightly as we can. Yeah, all right. All right. It behooves us to let the environment in which we live mm -hmm. know that we are different, that we belong to you. Yes, yes. Lord, keep your eye on the United States of America. Please, 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 Lord. Lord. please, please, Lord. please, Lord. please Jesus. Mm. Because evil seems to be running wild. But if we know your word, we know such situations have happened before in the past. But in your own time, by your calendar, not ours, you rise up with healing in your wings. Time is in your hands. And we're only here by permission. Mm. So give us the strength we need and the comfort we need. Mm. Because we are your lights in the midst of darkness. Mm. We're water in the midst of thirst. Yeah. We're comfort in the midst of sadness. Mm. Continue to bless us as your people. Please, you Lord. Please, Jesus, you Lord. Please, Jesus. All the power has always belonged to you. Yeah. Yes. There is no glory but that which belongs to you. Mm -hmm. Dominion is yours. Yeah. Power is yours. Yeah. Yes. And in the name of your son, mm -hmm. the deliverer that died on the cross, the forgiver of our sins. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray, mm. and the people said. And the church said, Amen. Let the church say. Let the church say, Amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church say, Let the church say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church say, 